I think the breakthrough idea really focused around homeostasis and around how the internet not only is a great communications facility, it helps people to communicate with one another, to be able to find people of like mind, to be able to do ridiculously easy group forming. I mean, that's all been around, we know this. But in particular, around the financial crisis that's been occurring, around you know all of this massive amount of change and shift and chaos that's been happening, one of the really interesting things that we talked about was this idea of feedback, both feedback in terms of data, so we can talk about the Internet of Things, of sensor networks, uh, feedback meaning people, so whether it's people who are communicating with each other, people who are communicating within their community, people who are communicating towards their government and providing feedback to their government, that in fact these feedback loops are critically important in maintaining linearity of the systems that are surrounding all of us, right? And so clearly what happened with the financial system is everything was so interconnected, things went off the rails, they went non-linear as we like to say. And now all of this terrible, terrible panic and unknown effects, right, un unanticipated consequences occurred. And what we talked about were some of the fundamental axioms of the internet, right? Openness, transparency, end-to-end, uh, -end, one to many, many to one, and many to many. That these are critical in terms of the, ph the core philosophy of the internet. But one of the really key questions that we were, we kept coming back to was around speech and around how to encourage free speech, but not necessarily having to do it in a way that is you know, linking back to Jeffersonian democracy and sort of the whole Western way of thinking about things. Because for us, obviously, that's such an inbred, it's such a natural part of what we do. So what instead we really figured out was that this concept of being, to fun being able to allow feedback to act as tampers on a system, just as the way a thermostat helps to provide feedback and then will cool down or heat up a system to keep it within a certain range and keep it linear. Such is the same with feedback and the internet as the world's greatest feedback mechanism. But it only works if you really have true, honest feedback into your system. That if you're only asking you know, people who are above the age of 55, well, you're gonna get a very skewed view of the way that things look. Or if you're only asking people who uh, are going to give one particular way of thinking about things, one religious group or one political group, that's going to skew things and give you bad data, bad feedback. So instead, it's really in a government's uh, best interest to be able to help maintain stability and growth to actually encourage open, non-punishable feedback. In other words, to, to move away from censorship and towards allowing for all of this free and open exchange of ideas and feedback. And that this actually helps to act as a damper for all of the non-linearity that can occur when we don't have these feedback mechanisms in place. So I think that we're going to see a bunch of very interesting uh, papers and some discussions that are going to get written about this and hopefully it, it provides a really good set of principles and discussions for everyone else who, when they're thinking about a systems way of philosophy, a systems way of thinking in terms of how to solve some of their problems. So it really cut across so many of the different other councils that we uh, interacted with here in Dubai and um, I hope it uh, provides some contribution.